Antarctica is going to be absolutely crucial in the evolution of, of our planet over the next centuries and thousands of years. We have records that the rate of sea level has been increasing and we can see this over the last century. And that was actually largely due to the melting of glaciers in the mountain regions. But over time, these glaciers are getting smaller and smaller and actually that supply of ice is, is almost going to dry up. And so in the future, it's how Greenland and how Antarctica behave, which is going to be most important for how sea level changes in the future. And that's why we're really focusing um, on Antarctica. In the Department of Geography at Durham University, there's a large group of scientists working on the problem of Antarctica. It's, it's more important now than it's ever been because of its potential contribution to sea level. And these scientists have a unique role to play because we're covering the whole range of timescales. So we're looking at thousands of years ago, how big did Antarctica get during the last ice age? How quickly did it shrink back during this warm period that we're experiencing at the moment? And we're studying the marginal areas of Antarctica. We're studying the interior regions to look at the thickness changes. We're studying the outlet glaciers and how quickly they're transferring the ice from the interior to the oceans. And we're even looking at processes that happened just one month ago. One of the unique things about Durham geography is that we bring together expertise in understanding the past ice behaviour offshore, onshore, and indeed in the centre of Antarctica. And we can combine those in computer simulations as well. We can come up with a much better understanding of the long-term changes of Antarctica in response to oceans and climate. One of the great things about the Antarctic ice sheet is that it contains some of the thickest ice on the planet. That means that the ice at the very bottom is very, very old. So this data here is from an ice core taken in Antarctica where the ice is about four kilometers thick. And we can actually sample the ice and sample the air bubbles trapped in the ice to look at past atmospheres. And what this graph shows is the cycles in temperature over the last 800,000 years. And when you add on carbon dioxide, you can see that they almost perfectly match up. So this provides a very strong link that temperatures and carbon dioxide are strongly linked. And of course, what's concerning is that carbon dioxide levels now are almost twice as high as they were in the past. We're seeing a really interesting signal in, in parts of West Antarctica, actually, that the mass loss there is much, much faster than we expected, um, much faster than was predicted even just 10 years ago. And what's interesting is because we have this, this time series of information from the GPS receivers that the rate of mass loss is not steady over time, but it's actually increasing through time in some areas. One of the ways in which we measure the ice lost from Antarctica is using satellite imagery. And what we're looking at here is a radar image taken from a satellite that's orbiting the Earth uh, above us by about several hundred kilometres. And what you can see here in the top left of the image is a part of the East Antarctic ice sheet. And then you can see this rumpled pattern flowing towards the, the darker ocean. And that's a, a major outlet glacier called Totten Glacier. And from the scale, we can see that this is about 40 kilometers in width. And we're taking satellite images of this glacier approximately every month over a period of a decade or so to try and understand the rate at which ice is being transferred from the ice sheet into the oceans. And you might just be able to make out this glacier moving slightly towards the ocean. It's actually flowing at several hundred metres a year. So one of the things we're using satellite imagery for in Antarctica is we're interested in whether these outlet glaciers are increasing or decreasing in speed. For example, there is some evidence that glaciers like Totten Glacier here are increasing in speed and they're discharging more and more ice into the ocean, which is increasing the rate at which sea level is rising. And at the glacier terminus, which is marked by the blue line, you can actually see small bits of the glacier floating off into the ocean. These are icebergs, and every time one of those breaks off, we call that a carving event. And each one of those icebergs is several kilometers across, so perhaps as big as, as Durham City, but in some cases, we can carve off much bigger ice, icebergs that might be as big as Greater London. So what we're interested in are what kind of processes lead to accelerations in the rate at which the ice is moving. We're also looking at whether 
ocean temperatures and circulation patterns or air temperatures are most important in driving some of the changes we're observing. So a lot of the work we've been doing has been in the Antarctic Peninsula where we've been doing some relative sea level curves and we've been doing other work there. And the Antarctic Peninsula is um, it's almost an unusual part of Antarctica in that the ice sheet there, the Antarctic Peninsula ice sheet, although it's part of a larger West Antarctic ice sheet, um, it responds very, very rapidly. It, it sits, uh, it's experiencing climate systems that are, um, allow it to change very, very rapidly. The ice is flowing fast. It's a very active system and can change faster than some of the larger, slower bits of the ice that sit inland in West Antarctica.